But then conservatives are against every single thing that would do that. So for instance, you talk about teen pregnancies, it's conservatives that are pushing to get abortions banned from everywhere, right? Conservatives are the ones that push to get rid of contraception provided for teenagers. Conservatives are the ones that push to get rid of sex education in schools. Conservatives are the ones that push against most of the policies that would cause the biggest change in the amount of teen pregnancies. And then they turn around and they say, well, why are people oh God, having kids out of wedlock? Why are people? I'm, I'm absolutely right. I'm sorry. I don't believe that's the case. I think that it's a socially reinforced thing. I think there is some trauma there, or potentially based on an individual's experience with it, but I think it's way more socially reinforced. And the, my evidence for that and would be how be, many- Just to be clear, um, not to cut you off, but you're talking about like socially reinforced trauma. Yes, right? because yeah, okay. when you said, now, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but if you say the <laughs> N-word, it seems like white people are more upset than black people are sometimes over it. And white people shouldn't have trauma related to the N-word, right? And I think that it's 90% that. white people that are arguing about it online, that are getting insane. And I even say as well, a white let's person be, let's be clear let's yeah. be clear white people right now under the usda you have the option to have free grab and go lunches for the entire year and this is something and that's an amazing policy because not every student is going to have the money to, to buy lunch as, as sad as that or sad or ridiculous as you might believe that to be but then the question is like okay if we can do this under covid if we can give free grab and gloat lunches to, to all 50 states, is that something that's actually sustainable outside of a COVID landscape? And then we maybe we ought to look into something like that. I, I think when, when we look at this from the left and the right, I, th I think the problem is that we, we le left-leaning people in general, and, and especially in regards to education, tend to have like these external forces that they want to use to push kids towards getting more educated. And the external push is usually like more funding or assistance on like the institutional side. So in this case, education. But the problem I think with conservatives, the reason the disconnect happens is because conservatives see it as more of an internal push needed. Um, and there's some validity to that. You can take a kid in a really good family and send him to a garbage school, and that kid is going to come out pretty smart because his parents are going to be on him for it. You're not going to get a kid in a really well-adjusted family going to even the worst fucking school, coming out not knowing how to read. That's not going to happen because mom is going to be there every day making sure he's doing even bad homework, and that, that's going to get solved, right? So I think the issue that you have here is that when you, on one end, if you take a conservative person that has a conservative outlook on life and he knows that good families tend to produce well-educated good children, irrespective of their educational institutions. And then you look at it from the left and you see, well, some public school districts have a ton of money thrown at them and we don't have the results that we're supposed to have. Not, it's not happening. We're not, getting, we're not getting the payoff for it, right? I think that you have to find a way to bridge that gap. I think that there are certain things, and you mentioned one thing, it was incredibly fucking good. It should never, ever, 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 ever be a question, ever. If, you're, if anybody thinks different, you're just dead wrong. It should never be a question if a kid can get a good meal. It just absolutely should never be a question. So things like funding, um, in some school districts, they've even done breakfast or lunch for kids. That's an amazing use of money. Feeding kids, it's like you take a dollar, you put it into food, and it goes into a kid's mouth. That's an amazing expenditure of money, you know? But all the other money, you know, like I think there's a legitimate question there of like, well, why do we have some school districts that are so overfunded and we're not seeing the results that we would expect to see? Whereas you can go to these like poor as fuck, redneck, hick communities and you get these really poor districts or whatever, but then you're getting kids that can read and they do math at like, as you would expect them to do, like maybe slightly below average, but they can do it, right? Where is this disparity of outcomes explained by for, for left-leaning people that are like, we just need to throw more and more and more and more and more money at it. I think that's the issue uh, that you're running yeah, into. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, 80% uh, right, right. of the high school kids in my graduating year went to college. 80%. How many the, of them? And well, where did you go? Right, right, Sorry right, to right, cut right. you off. I was, wait, wait, went to school in a rural that? Southwest Virginia wait, town. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, whoa, guys, guys, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're on YouTube right now, we're trying desperately, okay? August is getting fired if I don't hit 400,000 subs by the first. So if you like August editor, if you like my editor, okay? You better subscribe and hit the bell. Sorry to get uh, gender juice. Go ahead and after that, K book off. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I don't like interrupting because I actually am enjoying the conversation that's been happening so far. And from like, the, I am outside of actually in the middle of the, both of these, oh god, I feel like a centrist. Uh, but like, from the perspective of like Joe Lewis and like Par uh, Paradigm, I do actually understand that because like, with my school, like the high school that I went to like two years ago, we only had four, uh, it's called, I guess, uh, resource officers for the uh, students and that would cover uh if i'm correct close to 300 students our school could only hold about 250 students some students couldn't even go to class and have a locker to like place their belongings 
They would need to like come in and out. It would be, it was a whole mess. They didn't have the proper funding to have like enough infrastructure to even handle this amount of kids. And we also have to look at like the public, uh, private schools who obviously do get more funding because they're private institutions. But where I live and I'm in Canada, I'm in Alberta, uh, we also give public funding to them. And so they're, they've got a little bit of a cherry on top situation there. But with me, from the, I guess, angle of the conservatives, I do get that. Yes, like I explained a little bit earlier about my early education. I didn't really care. My family were immigrants. They were just trying to like, you know, survive and make it good here. I myself, again, didn't care uh, to begin with. But when I got into high school, I was given the choice of taking the regular course or taking IB. So I took IB. I thought, you know what? I feel like I myself am smart enough and I can put myself up to that challenge and push myself fo uh, forward. But I know that doesn't apply to everyone because out of all my friends, I was the only person that was in IB. I was the only person that decided to go from a, ma uh, from a mainstream course and challenge myself and push myself further. I tried to do this with my friends, but again, everybody's different. They were more worried about their own social life and their own like personal lives because like they had to try and keep themselves alive. They had their own like personal home life issues that they had to deal with. And yeah, I again, I get this from there are benefits of like making it so that the institution itself functions with the capability of handling everyone to the point that it is now only up to the individual to push themselves even further. That is sort of like what my ideal schooling situation would be. Yeah. I just think the bigger issue and like everyone has touched on it, but they're jumping around it, is parents and like the the more perfect union. You said it perfectly, like people who are having children under the age of 20, like my mom got pregnant me four days or she had gave birth to me four days before she turned 20. Like that shit was hard on her. She had to struggle through life. She didn't have a good paying job. Like my mom just now recently got a good paying job. And like, yeah, that's 20 fucking years later. Thing that didn't help me when I was in school. The only reason I'm here and has achieved as much as I did is because my grandfather was able to stay at home because he was disabled and able to help me through yeah. everything. And I understand not everyone has those luxuries, but why don't we focus on the bigger issue of like teen pregnancy, having kids in lower income areas earlier in life and affecting their chances of getting out of those lower income environments. Like if you waited, like I, I love kids. I would love to have kids. I would have them now if it was feasible, but I can't because I'm in college and I would like to get my education set up so that me and my fiance have good paying jobs before I have a kid. So yes, I take birth control, you use protection. You do these things during sex and make sure that you aren't having kids. And if we taught this education to people and we showed them instead of the luxury of a teen pregnancy show on MTV, we could show them how shitty shit actually happens and what fucks up your life. Maybe people would realize, hey, I probably shouldn't be having unprotected sex with seven people in a year and go around willy-nilly no fucks given and have kids all the time like that's not okay i know a 16 year old that has four kids it's think, like that's crazy but the, the big problem you run into is when you get when you get when you get when you get people that are saying these things right so from the conservative approach of like we need to do something to strengthen the families to do something with families that's absolutely yes. true but then conservatives are against every single thing that would do that. So for instance, you talk about teen pregnancies, it's conservatives that are pushing to get abortions banned from everywhere, right? Conservatives are the ones that push to get rid of contraception provided for teenagers. Conservatives are the ones that push to get rid of sex education in schools. Conservatives are the ones that push against most of the policies that would cause the biggest change in the amount of teen pregnancies. And then they turn around and they say, well, why are people oh God, having kids there, out of wedlock? Why are people, I'm, yeah, I'm absolutely I, right. I'm sorry, I come from a Catholic family. I know that I have a kid at 21, I absolutely know know this is true. I've lived the life and I know the rhetoric is true because I've lived in the families and the Catholic communities. I went to a Jesuit high school. I've lived fair, my whole life in conservative areas. Fair, I know that every single fair, part of this is true. Okay. To be fair, to be fair, that is shifting slightly. We have seen, we, we have seen abortion has gone down progressively throughout the years since the eighties. We've seen things like contraceptive be more uh, acceptable in the Catholic church. The Pope has actually come around and said like, Hey, this is something we need to push for. We yeah, but who's help. trying no, to make it illegal now? Right, but but the thing is, like, not everybody. Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pro-choice. Right, right. Well, no one cares if you're pro-choice. I'm saying that conservatives that focus on the family are, have now but established a bounty hunting system in Texas are, to get rid of. Shifting. Well, well, no, shifting. no well, I think what they're suggesting is that people make a, better. We've done a lot of talking about conservative viewpoints here, right? The one thing that you haven't brought up, Destiny, at all, right, is the fact that the reason why 
that they don't want the education being there is specifically because once you normalize the language, then you actively put it into the minds rather than it being something that is... Like, okay, here's I hate to tell CTV. If it's you think that there, you need an CTV. external it's thing to there. put sex into the mind of a teenager, I don't even know what to say to you. It's like, already there. It's a, well, that's true. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's true. Yeah, the I agree with that. But is, I'm when 19, you normalize I've talked this for like language, three years. It, needs to be nor it needs to be normalized between the parents and the kid and not between it, it doesn't happen parents. i'm telling you as a like, as a white kid in the united states white parents especially uh, christian ones second, do not white? as a white kid in the united states white you're parents white? do oh, not talk not to their, cdb i'm making a serious point okay white parents do not talk to their children about sex okay half the fucking white girls in this country have their first period they don't even know what the fuck is happening to their bodies okay the other half of the people have never had their my parents have never talked about sex my entire fucking life and i know that's no, not an uncommon I experience I went to school and the only thing i learned sorry, was sorry, sorry, sorry. abstinence sorry, it was it. exactly right. yes so no, it, I would agree with you. This is the thing that bothers me about conservatives as well. I think somebody else brought this on this panel. Conservatives will say shit like, oh, these conversations should happen in the home. Yeah, they should, but they don't. So it has to happen at school or else it's only gonna happen on the internet and porn forums or amongst their friends or with their doctor when their girlfriend is six months pregnant and they're trying to figure out why their belly's so big and she's missing her periods. That's the only time these conversations happen because conservative parents don't talk to their children about these things. Because for some reason, when conservatives turn 30 years old, they forgot every fucking thing about being a kid. And I don't know because your conservative parents, they were fucking when they were teens because half these conservative parents have children when they're in their fucking teens and somehow they think that they're a sweet little child at 16 who's going to spend the night at their boyfriend's house playing super smash brothers all night are you fucking kidding me like i don't know what it is but when conservatives turn 30 they forget everything about being a child and they won't have any of these conversations in the home with their children so it seems like it's kind of necessary to make them happen in other environments like at school yeah but you i do want to point out wait 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 no i want to wait to move on opinion up to as the Jesus Wait, fuck. Red Bill has had his hand up for a while. Perfect Union. Yes, Red Bill yeah. has, yeah. More perfect Union. No, no, fuck this shit, man. I got. No. My point is going to be Union. super short. Can I got directly it? fucking addressed there, right? You know what? Well, fuck this. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Geek. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So just just a quick point there, Destiny. The the whole thing with uh, trying to overturn Roe v. Wade isn't necessarily to outlaw abortion on a national scale, it's to put it back into the hands of states. And the other part is, is that if people, if, ki if kids were taught how to value themselves more appropriately, they might take better choice. They might, they might use protection. They might uh, choose to wait until they were in uh, a more stable relationship or wait till after they were out of high school or whatever, before they would engage in behavior that, that un in an unprotected way, is more likely to need lead to that kind of negative outcome that results in the kind of generational poverty we've seen for fucking 60 years but who does so that? it's not it's that it's but the, 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 this is cart this is part of the problem right we're talking about how parents have to have a relationship and be able to explain to their children or be more active in, in their kids lives in their education and their in their personal or social development and also in their uh, their sexual development as going from you know kids to like tweens to teens to adults and and the problem is is that in this society what we have done is we have allowed the federal government or government generally okay to become the nanny state so that the government's responsibility is to do these things that's why we try to push this bullshit down to them uh down their throats about all different kinds of sexual things okay technique or whatever in in grade school and in middle school high school that's not really that's not the appropriate place for that to be that's exactly what happens joe but the problem is i feel that like the, exactly what what the expectation let's, let's, let's talk about this I, I, again I'm gonna, I'm gonna so see my, my, I hold on i just want to uh, let me close it up to destiny's point right the idea that people out uh, people that want to outlaw abortion at a federal level okay are not trying to you know, uh, outlaw a means of birth control. And matter of fact, the people who support abortion nationally say that it isn't a birth control. It's a it's a women's health choice. So you can't have both of those things be true at the same time. We're not talking about the semantic argument if it's a birth control or not. We're talking about not having a child out of wedlock. However, you want to phrase but that semantically, whether you, you call that your, you. You led your comment saying that if you if you wanted to prevent if you wanted to prevent these things, then you're trying to outlaw things like abortion, so that you you inextricably link the two points. Well, does abortion prevent the birth of children out of wedlock? Is it is it oh. the, the question is from a moral perspective is it a means of birth control or is it a means no, of I, health? That's a boring no, question. I don't what, hold on. I don't I care. That, like wait, wait, that question is that question is totally irrelevant. Nobody, nobody cares about the answer have. whether it's birth control or not. It's whether or not it restricts people from having children out of wedlock. That's the interesting think, question, I right? I think you're well, and you're discounting the fact that the vast majority of conservatives who are opposed to it 
believe that abortion is currently used in the United States as primarily as a means of birth control. That's well, that's okay, fine so that that if it's used that. as a means of birth control. But the, the no, problem no, I'm having no, is that like conservatives are setting unrealistic expectations on their children, right? Like you'll have a conservative that, no, no offense, there's a lot of conservative people that got pregnant at 17 and got married, okay? And then they have and kids, and then they're and they're going to act like you know, like oh well, my kids aren't going to deal with sex until they've graduated with their fucking master's degree. Like that's just not realistic, you know? Uh, people are more towards the religious aspect of conservative because my parents are conservative, and I would say that I am a conservative. Um, and we were not religious, not raised religious in any way, shape, or form. My parents, yes, didn't teach me about sex, but they were very adamant about, hey, I found out you were having sex. You're going to go to the gynecologist. You're going to get put on birth control because I don't want you to be living in the same situation I did. I fucked up and didn't talk to you about sex. I'll, I'll claim that mistake. That was my bad. And then we talked about it with my younger sisters. I've even had conversations with my parents and my sisters to teach them because I am the oldest. So the mistakes happen with me and I end up teaching my younger sisters. Did your Which parents I teach you about safe sex practices outside of birth control? Uh, no, they were like, here, go to the okay. gynecologist and the gynecologist will figure so, it out. And so, so I understand that. People like my parents <laughs> don't because <laughs> my parents are immigrants. We're socially but they also now know they this. They teach me Perfect this kind of play. stuff. I have to learn it myself, either from but school. But I know or... this, that it's not okay to just do that or like go to school and be like, hey, my friend told me X, Y, and Z or go to Pornhub, go A, X, Y, and Z or go to fucking whatever site you're learning shit on that teaches you. I, I listened to a podcast the other day about a woman who believed that if she jumped down the stairs or did jumping jacks after sex that the sperm wouldn't travel up her vaginal canal because gravity would pull it out and she wouldn't get pregnant this is the shit people are believing because we're Capillary not teaching effect. it to either the parents aren't teaching it or the te the teachers aren't teaching it so let's play hot potato and see which one lands and somebody needs gonna to learn it. somebody's correct, gotta right? do it well i mean look in the day in this day and age of modern search engines nobody has an excuse to say they can't learn okay we've right. that galaxy fear dr red peel and uh uh, pragma, uh par paradigm, sorry. Get active if you go Hi. ahead. Yeah, so I think the whole point is that sex education at school fucking sucks. It always <laughs> has. Probably will for a long time yet. Um, I don't agree with the whole abstinence only education. It seems to happen a lot in the US. Thankfully, that doesn't quite happen here, but sex education is still very, like, heterosexual couples pushed. And I also think, like, the whole argument about, like, children at a wedlock and stuff, like, why does that even matter? Like, why should someone need to be married to have a child? It's a religious belief. Is... Yeah, no, no, absolutely, yeah, but, like, outside of that, like, there's still some people who are, like, oh, no, like, you need to, like, be older and, like, have a job and, like, get married and then, ha then have kids. Like, that's just, like, a whole social thing and, like, a story which doesn't really apply to, like, our lives anymore because marriage used to be a way for women to sort of have more importance if that makes sense like um i work with a lady who's in her 50s and then apparently just before she got married um women couldn't have like any access to like their husband's will or anything like that if they weren't married to them like when they died and like yeah well, that's, that's well. still like that <laughs> in, in a lot of countries I yeah, mean, yeah like in it's just not it's a legal construct most places so, it's so, women's so, legal have right like a social all. construct all right. Right. Like, Why does cap, being like, married make someone a better parent? It doesn't. Because That's it's just an, not because how it works. because like, more like two people have the ability to make more money than one by and large. Like marriage is an economic yeah, exchange more than it is yeah, an yeah, exchange of married, love, though. and a lot of countries believe that to be so. I, I mean, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta be, we can't be going. Okay, this is some crazy. This is like way, way too far. We're kind of getting off track. This is also this is yeah, way yeah. too far to the left. We gotta be careful not to pass it to Red Pill. We can. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I was with. Look, I, I think it's so hard to reach parents. And it's like um, every person reaches... The idea of saying that like, oh, well, families are only for economic means, that's not true. There's a lot of support you can find in a family. That's a really crazy statement to say. I, people are a little bit too much on that sometimes. It's so hard to break this cycle where we have access to kids and like the ability to teach them young. And like, but like there's this cycle happening with their parents not doing a good job and like the parents are failing to some extent. And it's, it's producing kids who are not prepared to be good adults who become bad parents. And that happens again. So like with Joe Lewis, I, I was trying to get at like what policy prescriptions we could go to to like fix this. And it seems like funding is pretty much our only option. So like instead funding schools is one way to go about it. I don't know if there's a way to reach parents and like sort of break through that ego barrier and like get them to That's do things better in like raising 
That's why I said uh, there needs to be a concentrated and dedicated effort from the schools to make sure that the parents know the resources at the schools and are able to utilize those resources. Like, do you think that would be not, effective? Of it course it would be effective. Like, if yeah. you make sure that parents have, know the resources at the school and are, know how to access the resources and utilize them, I don't know why you wouldn't think that would be an effective thing to do. Like, Well, I mean, if they're in, like, poverty and they're... I don't care if they're poverty status. Like, they should yeah. know the resources of the school and how to use them. Well, I don't the care if they have the no school... money or all the money in the world. They should know the resources. What about, like, one-on-one time at home and if, like, encouraging them to read books? What if it's, like... You think it's possible yeah, and to parent, and teachers can encourage that encourage that with parents, but then it, the buck goes to the parents at that point because I can For tell sure. my student as much as I want until my face is blue. Hey, if you practice your saxophone or clarinet, you're going to have a much easier time in band class. I can say that until I'm blue in the face. But if a parent does not have the concentrated effort of being involved in the educational process of learning an instrument, then what are they supposed to do? And then this is constant cycle of parents saying, "I don't know why my student's practicing." What's well, like? Are you involved in the process of practice? with your child and some parents are like well I'm, I don't have enough time for that and it's like well if you don't have enough time for that I don't know what to tell you because as a teacher I can't saying. force your child to practice I, and then I just turn into a babysitter which is fine that's what I'm saying and we keep seeing this, this failure of funding to like enact that kind of change you're talking about it just seems like the apathy of the parents can't be overcome by like asking them to do better in a well, lot of cases it can that. it can but it's going to require like a dedicated effort in making sure people understand what the stakes are like, we know that if your child does well in school, you're going to have better chances of going to college and going to the schools that you want to and have more access to opportunities in schools. Like, th there's only so much I can explain to a student if they have a 3.2 GPA and the program requires a 3.7 at graduation. We can't, we can't extra credit our way up those extra points, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, I, I, I just come back to the point that it's problematic to say that the issue for kids not being effective in education is simply that we need to throw more money at them or we need to sort of level out that playing field. If we have, I would posit that if we have school systems that are well-funded but have poor outcomes, we should enable parents in those school districts to be able to send their kids to other schools that have better outcomes. And that money that we have, one second, the money sure. that, that the money that's going to the bad school system should be able to follow the kid to the other school. So I'm a big fan of charter schools, public charter schools, private charter schools, and public option charter schools. Okay. Yeah, peer, peer peer the, group. I have a very simple. And, and there are and there and there is at least some evidence that that these kinds of approaches force more competition within the education system, which result in better outcomes for students in both in both types of schools. How would you pay for the busing? Who should pay for the busing? The busing is going to, the money for the, okay. So busing is part of the local school district, right? That's not okay. federal dollars. Sure. Okay. So, so, so here's the so problem. If here's the school, the, if the school is, hang on, defense. you asked me a question. You, let me at least answer the question. Let me at least answer the question. I can give you a better hypothetical so you can answer this to the best of your ability. Can okay. I so we're going to drop the last hypothetical. I, I'm going to give you a hypothetical about busing. I'd like for you to answer that. Is that okay? Sure, it's a different question, but sure. Well, I mean, it's the problem. So if I feel that my student is not succeeding in this school academically, mm -hmm. so I want to send them to another institution, sure. I believe that my tax dollars should go towards funding to this other school. However, there's still the issue of busing, which is done at the local level. Who is going to pay for the busing of that student? Is that burden going to go to the parents? Is that burden going to go to the, to the school? Who's going to pay for the busing for that child to go to that school? Okay, so at at a base level, right? If a per if a parent is going to move a kid, or going to have the option to move a kid from one school to a different school, chances are that that's that uh, competitive school, that other school is going to be in the same general area, and that they probably have uh, transportation systems worked out. If they don't, and then it's not an option for the kid, right? We so see this all the time. Be, so the kid is still going to be stuck schools. in that particular school. We see this all the time in parochial schools with uh, public schools. They share busing. This is a pretty common thing, at least where I'm right, from. I don't know we're talking, about I'm talking about the concentrated busing of individual students from one school to another. So you're saying that... Are, uh, no, no, that's not no, usually how that works. It's, it's usually, an individual it's student choice. It's that's usually not, on a logistic basis based works, on whatever the most but, efficient path is, and that's how they usually do it for the parochial schools, and as and well as, uh, you know, like um, magnet schools. 
They are, we already see many examples of this. And I understand that. But if we're saying the tax dollars are going to another institution, that would imply that that school is out of district or even out of the county itself of the local municipality. No, so, again, uh, so out of the district is the not busing? out of yeah, but out of the, the out bus? of the school look out of the school district means any school not part of the 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 district taxing authority. It could be in the same geographic location, okay, like county location. So that I, I don't I, I think I, it's, I really don't think I really don't think you're catching what I'm throwing here. So no, you're you're trying to Joe. Trying I think Joe. I think what Joe is saying is when you get out of the bounds of like the normal districts. I think is that what you're saying, Joe? When you're getting yes. like when you're sending people further than what would be normally uh, attributed to like a school. Yeah, district. but it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen that the that the that there is a geographic further. It just means it's a different organizing entity. We would have to we would have to look at the, and then also too let's say if your tax dollars are going to another area and there's an over expenditure what should happen to that additional money should that be a voucher that the student could use towards like say luncheons and stuff like that for the school should it be some type of tax credit like what would you be your prescription for that because the school can be underperforming for a lot of reasons sure and i think that to the extent that those things exist and the and it and i think that it is a problem like that, that is an issue that's been addressed at, with public charters, right? That there are kids that are coming in that are poor and then they're bringing, they're bringing voucher dollars into it. They're bringing donations. They're able to fundraise and do things like that. So that these kids, these parents, and the parents tend to be more actively involved. So they tend to do things that, that tend to support the, those charter schools more efficiently. And I can look, and I can look something up. I would, I, I can look something up and, and, Bring it back and talk to you on your channel, but you'd have to unban me first. You've been unbanned for about three months now. You can <laughs> no, that's not true. I, I bet you if I All go. Right, bet. Do you want to? Do you want me to share my screen and show? We you don't need so to have this. Is not, I was, yeah, this is not. Yeah, yeah, this is not. I looked at your screen a few weeks ago and I wasn't banned. So you died. All right, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it again in a different scenario. School. B is the school that you're currently at, and you believe that your child is not getting a sufficient education in your school. The cost per student in that school is an average of $700 for tax expenditures. We're, this is not how funding works, but we're gonna say it costs $700 towards, towards taxes. The other school per student is $400, and that's the school you wanna send to, send your child to. And both districts agree, and that's all in the <clears> books. <throat> There's an over expenditure of $300. Where should that money go? Should you be used to, uh, okay, I, I, I get your hypothetical. That okay. 300 bucks, that extra tax money should go into the school to be offered as a voucher for some kid who can't afford it. Or to what go to a program that, that facilitates how, the education. So how would they determine a student who would be needy for that? Is that something that students should, uh, parents should apply for? Is that something from a lottery? No, it could be, uh, you oh, could make it. Like this is also, you could, there's, a, there's all worthless. kinds of criteria that you could apply. Okay, to make school, something like you're not work. allowed to you're not allowed to know the income of of parents unless they relinquish that information. Okay, so you ask them. Do you make it available as a, as call it a scholarship grant? Would, would you be comfortable for a survey of that of schools knowing your financial? That seems like a very easy way for implicit. How do they money. handle how do they handle free and reduced or, lunch then if they don't yeah, have, have, have to that. apply for it? it. Be yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they could, you're just making an opt-in yeah. program. Yeah. That's yeah. not that's not what your question is asking. The idea behind it is to say if somebody is somebody is going to a charter school and they can't afford like the, the component that the parent might have to bring into a charter school, and then the school has a, an excess of funds because of other things that they're doing or they have good property taxes that they can apply or whatever, you know, whatever the funding mechanisms they have are and then they have they have an excess supply and then they want to make that available so that other kids can have a good educational outcome remember education is about the kids right so if they can do if they can more effectively efficiently use that money to help more kids as opposed to keeping them trapped into an underperforming or failing school that may be over that may be funded to to a better degree may have more riches or whatever but still have poorer outcomes then I think we should all be celebrating the fact that these schools are trying to do right by the kids, and and, and maybe the schools... and maybe the public school systems, which are rife with with um, union rules and and like look at what happened in COVID, all the stuff that the unions fought to keep the schools from opening up, despite the evidence in the science that said the kids were at less risk of transmitting catching or transmitting COVID, and then they fo they forced these schools to shut down, they forced them into. Um, uh, virtual only classes where we now look at the and studies have come forward that say the kids are four to six months behind in math four to six months behind in reading 
Okay, and then we still want to keep pumping money into public school systems where these kids have shit educational outcomes. That, that's so let these other let these other competitive let these other competitive educational opportunities. We don't have need to a get a and then evaluate and them for man. what they are. Come on, I'm confused. All right, uh, real quick, sorry, sure, sorry to cut, but like, and, I want and to with that, guys, and with that, I, I would love to keep. I would love to keep talking, but I'm going to have to dip out. I told Danabo, so I don't know if there's anybody else waiting in the wings. Joe, I'll I'll drop by your your site and we can chat some more because I I I have been interested in wanting to talk to you, um, and I'm glad that I'm not banned. So I'll talk to you later. Yeah, for sure. Right. Have, Give me a shout out, uh, more perfect union, and yeah. Okay, so I am the more perfect union. I I. Uh, stream occasionally at twitch.tv the more perfect union i'm also on youtube and a couple other places but i don't really do too much with those yet most of the time you can find me yakking it up on somewhere in the con uh, conservative space or whatever buckeye ctv and some others um uh i am a constitutional conservative i believe that if we want to if we want to have these different kinds of societal structures i'm not necessarily against them i'm just saying let's try to get them done in a constitutionally appropriate way and not keep bending you know, bending or contorting things like the the Commerce Clause to be able to get to them. So, with that said, um, it's been interesting. So, I, I, there's a lot of guys here, a lot of people on on the panel tonight that I have not really talked with before, and um, grateful for that opportunity to be able to come in and talk to you guys. And hope you have a good rest of your night, a good rest of your weekend. Y'all take care, and I'll catch you up well. with you soon. Have, have a great holiday, MPU. Yep. Thank you so much. All right, uh, I'm getting too afraid to paradise. All right, it's a stupid fucking meme. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, I had some responses ready here and there, um, and I kind of lost them because ADHD brain. Um, so let's try this. Kids are behind in school because we tried to adopt a college level lifestyle to a bunch of people randomly and they don't know how to really deal with it. We didn't give any emotional or mental support towards these kids. We kind of just said business as usual and expected them to carry on, even though we were invading their personal lives by being on the device that they normally use to disconnect from us. This is what I mean about saying the perspective of like somebody who lives here versus somebody who just talks about it. Like I can tell you with experience, the reason why kids are behind is because everybody behind because there was no tools given to help us transition. We did not ki give kids a break off. We worked them harder because we expected them to be able to do more because they were at home more. And we thought that with them being home more, that their home life would turn into this magical oasis where it would become a school friendly or a learning friendly environment. And we did not account for any of the factors outside though of which people have been talking about here all day, which are the parents. For that, and I'll keep it to that because I feel like if I were to spiral off, I could do it, but I'm not gonna. Um, parents, at some point, is there any I have to absolve to parents to of the guilt of not being able to prepare their outcomes. kids for whatever is being taught. And the reason for that is the curriculum that is consistently changing and has been changing in a way that divorces the parent from even understanding what's going on. If you've seen the memes about Common Core math, that is not a joke. That is real. Nobody knows what the hell is going on except for the kids. Therefore, the kids end up having to explain this to the parents. The parents don't get it because they work at Starbucks from four to nine and then go to their nine to five. And then, boom, I'm home in time to make uh, grits and shrimp. That's a terrible joke. Nobody's going to get that. Maybe one person will. Damn. When we start talking about the home life. You are involving factors to which every single, as we've said before, the individual's experience is different. My problem is, is that as an African, as a black person, my experiences relate very heavily to people, regardless of their background or their skin color, but based on where they live. We all share the same memes. We all got the same jokes. We all know what go on in the hood when it go on in the hood. That culture flies into schools. That culture becomes a school culture. So if it's cool to say, oh, I don't care, you know, I'm going to make my way one way or another. It becomes on us as teachers to reframe whatever they know into a positive light. It becomes the onus becomes on us, whether we want to or not, to become pseudo parents for them because we are giving them the informational tools, at least at a basis level for you to understand how to navigate being an adult in this world. You need to know math so that way somebody doesn't shortchange you. You need to know science so you need to understand what happens when you get a cut. I'm being facetious, but yeah. 
You need to know <clears throat> gym so you can have a healthier lifestyle. You need to know certain things and these classes teach you those things and that's why we have the educational system set up from the ages of about three, four, five, depends on where you are, to uh, 18 and so forth and so on. College is an opt-in program. Not everybody wants to go to college. Not everybody has the mental acuity to pay attention in college. I was one of those people. I got through college gladly, but like I had to take a semester off. I had to keep skipping semesters because I was wondering, why do I feel the innate pressure to graduate from here? Why is this work harder? Because I have more time. We didn't give that time or that understanding of the world to the children that we put inside of a Zoom class. If we had the ability to use Discord or something that they liked more, they would have frequented it. They would have frequented it more. They would have had a instead of oh, we all have to learn how to use Zoom. The children could have became the teachers. Hey, we'll we'll teach you how to use this and we'll teach you. How to, we could have had fun with it. We could have had a different approach to education, but we took the same approach and tried to apply it down to this level here. And you're going to get the result you're going to get. People are going to fall behind. I'm tired. I don't want to stare at it. I've never stared at a screen for eight hours. My eyes are used to a smart board uh, 15 feet away in the classroom. I'm used to talking with my friend. We didn't provide any context for why the world was the way it was. We made it that way because we felt like if we uprooted everything, we won't know how to we won't know how to how to how to um to reach them. We won't know how to teach them. We didn't give ourselves any time to even think about a different way we could approach education. So when we have this conversation about parents, we have to have it right now in a not post still going COVID era where now the parents' lives have changed. I don't see my friends. I'm angry at home. I drink more. I drink with my students online. I can't be in, I can't be around the student's camera walking butt naked. So I'm not going to be crossing into my room. We're changing little tiny aspects of every person's life and expecting them to be able to fall back right into the patterns of, hey, this is what you need to do to be more involved in your kid's life. We need to have incentives for that. There needs to be a system in place that gives parents a feeling like I'm going to this uh, I'm going to this school board meeting and I'm going to get something out of it. I'm going to get like I can make a change. I hate to do it and put it all the way back to the whole voting circle. But like you disenfranchise people from the process itself. They don't care after five years about a parent teacher conference or my kid brings home the report card. If it's bad, he, he getting cracked. And that's it. Like if it's good, we're getting taking you out for ice cream and McDonald's. Like the reward systems are different. The styles of life are different. And for us to try to equate all of what we like or all of what what we live into as like, well, it could be this way. It could be that way. We skip over not only the home life in these little tiny details that affect the way people uh, think and understand things, but then we look outside. What if, you know, I want to have a sex ed class, but there's no Planned Parenthoods in the neighborhood. That kid got to go over to the next town. They don't have a car. I could teach you all I want. Like you said, I could scream. I could, you you want to be a good sax player? You want to be a good guitar player? Like they told me, <laughs> you got to practice every day. But I go home. We can't afford a guitar. Personal responsibility when it comes to education has to be a united. Con and I hate it because I feel like that's your trademark and I don't want to steal it. But as Joe said, a concentrated and dedicated effort <laughs> to Assage these small little tiny cracks so everyone can at least say if my kid wants to take a music class There's no money barrier blocking that if my kid wants to learn about sex ed at least they'll be able to put it in practice If something bad happens. Yeah, you know about Planned Parenthood. I'll take you there right now But if you have a parent that doesn't believe in Planned Parenthood, it don't matter what I teach them So that's where I agree with you. It's got to be up to the parents but see what leaving it up to the parents does? It has to be a concerted effort. Yes, a village to raise a child, but we don't have a village. We've got cities and there's highways in the middle of them. I don't know why. Infrastructure is terrible. I hate everyone. That's pretty much it. Based. You I, that was, I think that was the best, the best rant of 2021. I think we just saw right there. We just witnessed it just now. We should all be in awe. Flip it and ship it. I love that. I don't know. I don't, that just had me so riveted. I, that was amazing. Really? I, I've I've seen you on other panels before, Paradigm Shift. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that type of uh, just just perspective. That was um, that was amazing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's talk policy. Huh? I mean, I, thought that I don't know how do you follow that up. I mean, Seriously, we were, like how do you how do you follow that up? Like, I mean, well, I mean, let's get into specifics. I mean, it. I really 
Like, yeah. I mean, like one thing is probably a mass expansion. Like, if we're talking about the one, like the one thing about like abortion and stuff like that, like obviously an expansion of sexual education. And there's a lot of ways you can go about that, but obviously it's very, very clear that physical education teachers are not properly equipped to do this. So we should probably also at the same time lower the certification barrier so that people in other professions can make it into the classroom at the levels that are age appropriate. I mean, is that something that anyone wants to tackle? I mean, like, I agree with you there. I don't know what to say. (laughs) I agree that they should be age appropriate. I think, like, we should start off even as young as, like, kindergarten. You can start, like, when you're a kid, you teach people stranger danger. Like, you understand, like, hey, let's call body parts by their actual fucking names instead of making up these dumbass names like my cookie or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah, Yeah, let's call it a vagina and a penis. That's what it's called. Let's call it that. Like, let's teach these things. and. Yeah, I'm saying offset the burden of physical education teachers. Like, obviously, physical education teachers are the burden to teaching sexual education. And I'm arguing that this is probably something that you could have doctors to For come to schools and to teach a class. Like, I, I don't see why a OBGYN couldn't teach a sexual education course. For so example. for me, um, my experience, at least in the school I was in, we had... Um, health class which was completely separate we had a health teacher um and then we also had like when women there was i think it was freshman year of high school um they took all the women out of gym class for that week and sent them to the nurse's office and the nurse taught us everything there is about a menstrual period and this is what happens is how it's going to happen but in my situation and I don't understand why why it came to only women having it and not the men as well. Men should be educated on this too. Y'all are gonna experience it with your ladies or your mo- woman, your daughters, sisters, your daughters. daughters. Like, yeah, like at some point in your life, you're gonna experience this shit. So why not teach you it? Like, it doesn't have to be completely separated like that. And your high school nurse could teach you this shit. It doesn't have to just rely well, on they, that. They can't, though. Why not? Because they would have to do it in a special like the. Teacher certification in states still exists. So in order for a nurse to teach a class long term, like sexual education, they would need a teacher certification, which is why my argument, which didn't get addressed, was that we should probably lower the barrier of certification and alternative certification so that professionals like nurses could teach something like sex education. Okay, wait, hold on. Well, wait, wait, hold on. Just to recenter us in reality, okay? A, any, sure. a PE teacher, anybody should be able to teach sex ed. Nothing that you yeah. learn in sex ed should require like a fucking RN or like a doctor. No, you or shouldn't people. have a degree. You, you should have like your PE teacher education. should be able to have like a unit on yeah. sexual education. Right. These are things that everybody should know, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't saying like it should be, I'm not saying it should be exclusively taught in that capacity but as an example like if you don't have enough physical education teachers to teach that course i think it's totally reasonable to like to have for a nurse to teach sexual education or even the district to be able to have that to have it be an option yeah but like if you don't have the funding to have like a pe teacher i seriously doubt you get the funding to bring in like external like medical professionals to teach classes that seems well, like a whole well, other you affair can do it in like a you can do it like in a 25 percent funding capacity or 50 percent funding capacity so you can have it so that they only are responsible for teaching that course on their specific parameters um that's what i mean the reason why i bring it up is because that's what my district does so <laughs> do pe teachers are like notoriously creepy so I don't know. Yeah. If so I yeah, I don't know if I would want my PE teacher. Pick another that. subject. Science teachers. Yeah, like in in all honesty, that's where it should be taught. Is science. Sex education like it should is part of the PE certification in most. Yeah, states. but I think it should it should be in your science classes. It's what it is. It's science. It's about your body. It's about how your body functions. It's not. Or I mean, like technically everything is science, anatomy. right? Just, yeah, <laughs> but like we could add a health class by itself, like. To make sure people that's are what I on dietary health, lifestyle health, and like sex health. That way, I had like, a that's what I had. Did y'all not have that? Yeah, yeah I, I had that. Well, I, I had it, was... it as a single unit. That's that was like my education, where I was only taught like sex ed and like general like physical, not physical, but like yeah. lifestyle health in like one unit for two weeks, and that was it. That was like ours. Was, ours was all, like once or school. twice yeah. a week, every every week for the entire year yeah. and it was 
Like, it was about drugs, it was about we wore drunk goggles to stimulate drunk, um, being drunk, and we taught you, the, like, the effects of alcohol and drugs on your body and all that shit. We watched videos, we watched all that shit. But we, uh, the only thing when it came to sex education was abstinence. We didn't, there was no, hey, this is what a condom is, this is how you use a condom. Like, I understand we all laugh at that, but, like, in reality, like, nobody ever taught you that, you just kind of figured it out. And rather than just, hey, let me just figure this out, why don't we have somebody be like, hey, this is the proper way to use this, like... I like I just don't understand where this was lost in translation like why we don't do this because sex education is a big part of our life like all we do like is reproduce so like why not do it properly and like cut back on STDs cut back on SCIs oh, cut back on teen pregnancies cut back on everything that could occur like why and, I can like, tell you why I can tell you why hey hey it's finally funny. something that I, I know um because that's what you wanted that's what that's what people wanted. They wanted it to yeah. be stopped teaching in schools. They wanted it to be a responsibility of specifically the parent because they felt like we would be teaching them some other things. And like, so we tried to like muscle it together. And then around, I think 2012, exactly. I could give you the date actually. March 14th, 2012, uh, we just pretty much did away with all the extracurricular uh, funding for a lot of districts across the country. Like we moved all the money into pushing more of a STEM technique and that left everybody out to dry. Um, we removed it completely because we felt like it was unnecessary. And when I say we, I mean the people who make the decisions. And we argued against it, we rallied against it, but it did nothing. And so now we're left in a society where like, we don't teach that in a way that would be responsible and or leave a lasting imprint. Most kids just giggle in class, move on, and like, oh well, like, <clears throat> what am I gonna give you as your final exam on health? Like, uh, yeah. uh, we got a multiple choice test on like, what you've learned it's and- It's the penis too. Yeah, Wait, who like, made the decisions? Who made the decisions? Name names. Nah, you're well, good. It, it's it's a it's a bunch of it's a bunch it's of a names. bunch of people. It could be it could be <laughs> your governor. It could be your state legislature. It could be your local school board. It could be your local school board in collaboration with your parent teachers association, which is in collaboration with the um, head of curriculum and curriculum or the head of funding or the funding committees within the school board. It could you'd have to like and again like you could figure the stuff out. Like you can ask directly, but well, the, the no. answer isn't You're even just, the answer. The, the key point here is that it's 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 the will of the voters. Like you, like when you say who, why did this happen, it's because that's what parents wanted. Parents didn't want their children being taught yeah. you know, sex at the school, yeah. and because they're going to be taught about homosexuality, teach and they're going to teach them how to have sex, and our kids are all going to be sex monsters and stuff like that. That's why it didn't happen. It wasn't just one elected official that did it. It was the fact that that's it a, wasn't an yeah, official elected problem. to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, this, I is what we're, this is what we're seeing with the with the field of study that I'm not going to waste time naming is that like parents are, are galvanized and frustrated over a thing, which actually ties back into the C word conversation where they they don't want schools teaching students to hate themselves because they're white and a bunch of all these other things. And then instead of leaving it up to the school boards to decide, like, yeah, like we don't teach these things, but like. We just don't like they didn't they that, that wasn't good enough for them so they looked for a more they looked at a more legislative capacity um that's why we're seeing like the banning of these principles that again aren't taught in schools in in the few like a handful of states and you did ask um buck you did ask uh they didn't pretty much teach it when they had the money um the same reason why home ec and driver's ed like started falling off the curve sides even though we had it like the curriculum restricted it and and especially in those curriculums, you can't bounce out of it to say, well, this book doesn't really describe it the way I would want it to. So like maybe we could take a deeper dive. Now you're fired. Rubber room instantly. Wouldn't even be a wouldn't even be a thought. And so any teacher put in that position, like you have to find teachers and move them from one subject to another. Because nobody wanted to teach health. Nobody, nobody wanted to put themselves in that position where they slip up and make a mistake and boom, that's like, so the fear of that on top of all these committees and people who we can't name and people who you don't know existed until like two years ago, all collaborated and over time eroded it to a point where now we feel like it's missing and what can we do about it? But like, that's what we wanted, but we didn't see it. And when I say we, it's a general, we like the will of the voters, like that's what we wanted. And now we're mad at the effect of that, but that's what we wanted. And it's hard to explain how to get out of that because you also then start have to undo all the, and you see how the conversation goes in a circle. So to relate all the way back to where we started with the C word, 
I feel like if it's causing you a problem and it's starting a circle, then at what point do you care about the other circles? Because if it's about you, and not you, but like if it's about you, then at what point does it become about others? Because others collectively have had the same issue for the entire, and I hate when he said this, for the entirety of this country, and only now is it getting addressed. You can't flip people's brains. You can, we can, we can have this panel for 17 hours and talk about the deepest, darkest parts of this country. But like until people wake up one day and say, I'm not gonna live like that anymore, then it doesn't matter about our discourse here. It matters that a certain group of people finally felt like they had something to complain about. And that's just not a world in which we can live sustainably because if every year something new comes, I feel like I'm making a flu vaccine joke here. If every year something new comes up and we have to add a, add a remedy to it, then, at, then where's, why are we focusing on 2020? And like, well, yeah, the person that really didn't like me because I was black denied me an apartment and I never got the reason why, but I won't say the C word. Like, even if I said it, I'm, I can't I can't put no power behind it. And I know how reductive that argument is and I apologize for it. But like at the same time, I'm now not allowed to, as Gender Juice said earlier, I can't talk about saltines. Like I can't talk about uh, export sodas. I, sure <laughs> I like I can't talk about it. And you got that win. It took riots to get the Civil Rights Act passed. Like, we, we, we're not the same. I'm built different. I'm just, I'm built different. And I feel like when we have this discourse, it's trying to equate two things that aren't equal inherently because we know for a fact that it doesn't affect us as a, us as a general population in such a negative way that it could start to spurn something even worse. Now, if it does, then I would gladly eat up my words and be like, nah, 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 I, I was wrong on that. We should have banned it a long time ago. My bad, I, I messed up. I could own that, but it's not happening. Wait, I don't so think, what are we talking about? I, when we have like conversations about like racial slurs, I, I don't think, think the conversation has to be like, all slurs are the same badness. I don't think anybody's even argued that, no? Like, I think it's okay Maybe. to say like, this is probably- I heard something like that earlier. <laughs> Well, no, I, I mean, they I might argue. Said, they might argue that, all of them. Stop yeah, being a dickhead. They, they might argue yeah, that all of them are racial slurs, but I don't think anybody's saying that they're all the same. They're of the same level of badness, rather, right? Mm -hmm. Does yeah, nobody live that. this? But um, like the conversation was kind of like white people have a privileged position. It seems like pretty obvious in a lot of ways, and I think like them being the target and like equalizing like the playing field by. By calling like some not, of them racial slurs? I, no, I totally, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but yeah. I, I am saying like we do have this persistent gap between groups and that privilege remains. And as, as long as it remains, there's going to be this tendency by some people, the people who are using the slurs to try and like reach for whatever tool they can to like level the playing field. I kind of think yeah, that's but like So for people that would make that argument, can we use racial slurs against Jewish people? In the United States, because as a class, they're overrepresented in terms of wealth, they're overrepresented in terms of politics, they're overrepresented in terms of cultural representation. Like, and if not, why not? So oh, everybody bring up here, the Holocaust, yeah, and then they'll be like, "Oh, well, they went through something and they were oppressed at one time." And so the, the argument is that we weren't oppressed, so we can't. Be, yeah. yeah, but like, do you understand? For, so firstly, not that's equated yeah. So thing. and I'm not saying you're making this. So firstly, that's not true. No. To tell a white person that they don't have oppression in their history is assuming a lot of their ethnic background, which everybody does for some reason. It's okay to do it with to white people, which is really cringe. Um, but that's not necessarily true. And even to a black person, if they're not an African American, if you have like an immigrant from another area, they might not necessarily have slavery in their background. It really depends, right? But like largely. We, we can make these assumptions and it seems like we're okay when we assume it all the way for white people but the argument before was like because at the end of um at the end of the paradigm shift speech you said like okay well if it's starting to cause harm or if all these issues get fixed it's okay i would argue and maybe some people disagree with me but i would argue that jewish people have done pretty well you know they have a country they have really good representation in like the upper echelon society in the united states so why can't we use all of the arguments that were just used for why black people can call white people a uh, cracker and you know we can't do the other way around why couldn't we use that to jewish people now the answer okay. really feels yeah. like it feels like the answer is just like well because that sounds bad but then that makes the whole other prior argument bullshit or to be more on the nose let's say in 50 years let's say black people catch up in every way and now they're even a little bit better than white people in terms of educational attainment and income and all that can white people call black people the n-word now because they're doing better than them 
Uh, if I can respond, uh, a little bit earlier we did talk about this. We like we've acknowledged that some people that use the c word use it in a way that is pretty overtly racist. For them, they only see racism as systemic racism in which white people have like are in the position of power, and so it's sort of justified to them. Which we've agreed that like it's racism, yeah, and that's why it's it shouldn't be allowed. Although like yeah, it's not to the same degree. It is racism nonetheless, and to, until we're at a, uh, a society in which, like, we're racial, I guess, racial ideas don't really exist in which the color of your skin doesn't have associated negative or positive <laughs> characteristics and everybody is uh, judged based on their merits, these words will have meaning, although to differing degrees, they still have a negative and or positive meaning and shouldn't be used until we get to a place in which everybody's okay with just speaking however they would like okay and like the, the but the second thing on top of this so like we, we talk about classes of people all the time okay so white people white individuals okay don't necessarily have white privilege the white class has white privilege i think that sometimes yeah. we have a really big problem where we start identifying individuals as classes and individuals never perceive their existence as such so a poor white person that lives in a rural community is not going to perceive himself as having white privilege and in some cases he might not even really have it he might not be in a community where he's getting an advantage for being white or if he is it's in a very like tangential you know historical esoteric manner that he's never going to perceive so to tell a person like that to become like a master of sociology and to understand the historical context in which his oppressive history sits over others i think is a little bit short sighted or i don't think it's possible i don't think that most people could ever be expected to to have that perspective that you can take an individual and say hey listen that guy can call you a racial slur because of like here's seven pages of reading you need to do to understand like why it's okay i don't think that's a very realistic goal to have for people yeah no i und i agree this is why like again yeah, this I is gonna this is a process that needs to happen over time and nobody like at this point it is good to just ban out ban the word outright until people just stop using it and just so I, uh, yeah I, I don't i think more maybe it's more grounded in reality like i think like yeah we should try our best to stop using slurs while simultaneously understanding that we ought to look into the context of why these slurs exist how they manifest themselves in the context and how they're used like one of the reasons why i think the c word in part is a discourse is because there is a level of separation to the slur itself in in terms of like when somebody invokes the n-word for instance like it's very clear where that word was used how it was used and why it was used but i would argue for a lot of white americans the c-word kind of feels like this this dated um relic of the past that only comes up in these situations um unless apparently you're a Hassan watcher but um but yeah i think like we should we ought to not use these words but try our best to explore the context as to why these slurs existed as as they were but that's not to say that like just because we understand it that we can it's okay to use it not because you know the context that would be a ridiculous thing to even posit but then and do you understand if, how if, frustrating if, it is that on one end right like two white people that are fucking wannabe gangsters listen to a lot of rap music if they call themselves the n-word like in a camaraderie fashion they're not trying to be racist they just do that all of a sudden there is no context there is no excuse it's horrible it's racism it's bad that's the word period but then when it comes to people like in a really aggressive pejorative manner it's like fuck you you know c word c word c word well hold on well let's look at the context that's like that's insane right like there, there's no there's no way that you can make both of these okay that like two people using like the, the soft day N word to each other who are white is really horrible regardless of context, but like aggressively calling a white person C word, well that's okay because of you know seven books of reading. Like there's no way that these can both be okay at the same time. I feel so, like there should, I, I, there should wait, be allowed. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, because I'm trying to make yeah. sure I'm really like conscious of my language. Did I posit the idea that I believe that, or is it just saying that kind of generally? Um, it, it feels like that's like the natural extension of when, when you say things like gotcha. we need to understand like the history of the words and why these are different. It feels like what you're saying is that in a perfect world, I should be accepting of somebody calling me a cracker, but I should understand that I can't, you know, even use another slur like in a, a recreational manner or whatever. Oh, no, no, no. I, I guess like, I mean, my, my position on it is that words have utility in different contexts. So, but the thing that sucks about it and me, and I, I'm pretty sure you may have said this before where the frustration is where there are white americans who have the n-word in their cultural vernacular and then you're then like 
once you go outside of that community, there's this like you run into sort of like weird stuff where like you, you see a white person who has this word in their vernacular and then they use it um, as they normally would. And then like, yeah, I agree with you. There are people who are like, whoa, what? You can't say that. Whoa, crazy. And it's like, hang on. Like, it's totally possible for white Americans to have the N word in their vernacular. I don't know why, um, especially left leaning people die on that hill. Um, so to agree with both of you, so I don't die on this hill, um, <laughs> I, I, I want to address destiny because, uh, let, you know what? I'm an honest person. I'm just going to be honest here. Like, come on. I, I've watched you. Like, it's so cool for you to be here. It's so cool for me to be here. It's uh, like, Hey, like I said the same when critically thinking veteran was here. I haven't met everybody yet. So the next time we do this, I'm going to be like, Oh, it's you guys. Sorry. Anyway. Um, I feel like that part of what we're talking i like that analogy i really do about the the jewish people i i like that that but i feel like this is all talking from a point of not a perfect society but one in which we could all agree on something and then it would be socially understood like the disconnect is that we could all end up on that agreement our viewers could end up on that agreement how far does that culturally spread before it hits that roadblock? Like the same thing I used to talk about with my friend Jason. He's white, grew up in, literally down the block from me. We went to the same schools together. We went through elementary all the way to high school together. He never used the N-word, though. And he explained it to me one time as, in theory, I could have the right because I grew up around y'all. Like, you know me, you know, you know my status. Uh, the privilege thing never hooked in for me. I lived with y'all. So we we ended up getting, you know, arrested together type stuff or like random stuff. But he still never felt the the need to add that into his vernacular. <laughs> that is a social construct of his own that he thought of that he wasn't taught of taught. So now. I would need some type of social contract in which we can weigh these things differently until a point where socially we all agree these things are all bad when they intersect with one another. Like if you like the Hoff twins, <laughs> thank you, Andrew, the Hoff twins, like in their neighborhood, that's their brother, that's their man's like he, he, they say the word like it don't bother them. Outside of that community, though, what is their acceptance? What is their validity? Do they get the car? Do they get the pass? If we start, like, basing things on people's environment as opposed to the social connectivity and contracts that we already have, where where do we land on how can we agree? And I think you did say that. I'm sorry. I'm probably repeating what you just said. Mm -hmm. um, where, where does that dichotomy exist together? And I don't think it can because somebody's gonna take it too far. And I yeah, feel right. like, given the license, um, you know who's the one who's gonna take it too far. And I don't think it's the person saying the C word. I'm gonna be honest with you, for right now. Again, I will gladly swallow my words if in the next three months, I start hearing about like hunter, hunter gangs looking for C words, like then, my bad, I, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's just, it's just, it's not necessarily a matter of like, is it too far or whatever? Cause like, I mean, we can argue, it's just, it's obviously a racial slur. And I, I listen, I like a lot of edgy humor, okay? But like, if you're not willing to ad admit as much, I just, I think that like, you have to do so much groundwork to, t to explain to somebody why this racial slur used as a pejorative, which is like the worst kind of racial slur, okay? Is okay. Um, and this other racial slur, even used in a non-pejorative manner, is always bad if certain people say it. Like, that's just an argument that I, I, it's untenable for 99.99% .99 of people. I don't even believe that argument. I don't think it's true. Uh, we, no, we treat, I, like, I some slurs in this country like we're, like, saying Voldemort's name. Um, and, and then, but for other slurs, we can use as a pejorative. Um, and then there's, like, a defense of it. And that's insane. That's just, it's not okay. Um, and... and uh yeah. Sorry, I, so I hate to cut you off, but I think I can answer that for you because I feel like a lot of us here, we could talk until our, our, our throats are raw, but at the same time, we want some answers. We want some moving forward points. Um, the reason for that is the trauma, the trauma of those words. The context of the N word doesn't really matter unless it were to be, and I hate this idea too, the educational sense, but people still wince at the word. 
that would have to become something so so socially acceptable that it would change where the direction of that word is going. And I feel like in this country, it's never going to. There are other countries that have the same sounding word, but it's it means something completely different. I wouldn't tell them to stop saying it, but they get hate. They get, you know, you've seen little TikToks, YouTube videos, people like, oh, I was talking in my native language and a bunch of people got mad at me. That's where I agree with you on. Like where, how, how is it fair for us to hold both of these things true all the time? But then for the inflection of it, if I say one word out loud, the people's reaction gives me that judgment. The, if you, like, um, like Buck said earlier, words got consequence. Uh, no, um, it was Kate. It was Kate. Sorry. Um, You're good. <laughs> um, words have con- words have um, consequences. Your actions have consequences. Yeah, I mean, we these all con- we, we agree with that. But yeah. like, I, I agree with what you're saying. But the question is, when we talk about like these words cause a reaction, okay? Now you say trauma. I don't believe that's the case. I think that it's a socially reinforced thing. I think there is some trauma there, or potentially based on an individual's experience with it, but I think it's way more socially reinforced. And the, my evidence for that and would be how be, many- Just to be clear, uh, not to cut you off, but you're talking about like socially reinforced trauma. Yes, right? because yeah, okay. when you say, now, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but if you say the <laughs> N word, it seems like white people are more upset than black people are sometimes over it. And white people shouldn't have trauma related to the N word, right? And I think that it's 90% that. white people that are arguing about it online, that are getting insane. And I even say as well, a white let's person be, let's be clear let's yeah. be clear white people on the left like i i have not found a, a white person on the right who has ever was like oh you can't say that but again maybe maybe that exists but uh i don't know about that i think the vast majority of people on the right in the country disagree. i think the vast majority of right-leaning people in the country if they heard the n-word they'd be like whoa like there's a reason why they started saying thug and shit okay they they even even conservatives fuck even a it's nazi from 4chan will tell you bro n-word that's a bad look you need to knock that shit off bro like even nazis will say that to each other online okay yeah, i don't exist in those holes so i don't sure. I, I, I think for the yeah. most part people, so like I, I, I don't think I don't think that it's a, a necessarily a, a traumatic thing. I think it's just, or if it is a trauma, I think it's one that's socially created or at least heavily socially reinforced. And to be clear, I'm not arguing to change that because no amount of, uh, of anybody arguing online is going to change how we culturally view the N-word. I don't even care a fuck about the argument. I'm just saying that you have to understand from an outside perspective, you sound so unhinged when you're trying to say like, white people should be okay with having racial slurs levied at them as a pejorative and then every other type of racial source police so heavily, but this one is okay, or any against white people are okay. That's just like, it's such a recipe for disaster. Do you think well, so I guess the best solution would be to ban both the words. Like, nobody should be called a racial slur. And I feel like I, that's what yeah, we all Yeah, but the issue is on. the N-word has been used, like, you know, like, is almost as, like, a bro term. And that's the issue. And, like, and it's to the point that, like, we can't even, like, It's been, like, colloquialized. White... Yeah. And so, like, I was on a show before where I had two people of color who were throwing the word around, and I had brought up a story of how I had took a person of color to prom, and he called me his N-word. Like, I was his bro, and then I, he was my bro, and he was like, I'm yours, and I was like, all right, cool. And I brought up the story, talking about it in context, and I had stated the word, which I guess was my fault for stating the word. It brought up a huge arar, and it was all by the white people on the show. You guys are right, 100%, that it's primarily white people who are throwing the argument about this. Two people of color on the show were laughing it off. They messaged me afterwards. They thought it was funny. They thought it was a great story and in the context of where things came from. But these two people, the three other four other people on the show freaked out, had me removed from the show, whatever. I was like, all right, whatever. Why is that word thrown around as a bro term and allowed, but now we're banning this word in completeness, like you just said. Like, you literally can't even talk about your saltines. Well, and I understand right now it's a hot word, so everyone's yeah, like blowing it into tops, portions. Yeah. We don't even know if that's really how this ban is going to be enacted. True, right? you but say but that. yeah, yeah, it, we can't say that now, but it's just a hot take, so that's where it's going right now. But it's just. Thing is, it's just completely different, and we're trying to, like, equate them as all racial slurs and we're saying that it's you have to be an in-group to say them and like it just it doesn't make sense in that aspect like why are we throwing these words around if they have such deeper meaning behind them and we're throwing them around as a bro term and just as a quick thing even the in-group thing is really funny that because i remember in our discord at one point in time like when we talk about trauma right in our discord one time we were like okay should we ban the n-word completely and it's like well we have black people on discord shouldn't they be allowed to say it so at one point we thought okay well maybe you can say the n-word but you have to send in like an id card first to verify that you're black so that you say and like you see how like ridiculous this guy's like, well, who the fuck even knows? Like, yeah, like it's it's actually like so crazy. 
I, like I on Twitch, know. are they going to be like, oh, are you a person of color? Like, let's verify this before we allow you to say this word. Yeah. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense. So, okay, can I ask you a question then? Do you think yes. that the, this might be a fun one. Do you think the N word with an A and the N word with an ER are the exact same word in terms of their application and usage? No. Okay. I feel like sometimes... We equate like, them as the same, which... Not my words, but yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. And maybe there's a resistance to that it's not possible for that to happen. That even when we invoke it with an A, that there's no way that we can separate it with an ER. I don't know if anybody has thoughts on that. Um. I do. Um, I feel like now we're talking about communities. And when we talk about communities, we really got to un... And it's so funny he said, like, don't think about the past. Like, let's play attention to the future. But you really got to, like, see how that word became a part of Black people's vernacular at first. You really got to dig down deep and say to yourself, like, this is... As he said before, the socially reinforced trauma. How do we measure the severity of it? Because that word exists to try to water down that trauma. And I feel like only those people who would direct that word in a negative way towards me are trying to reinforce that trauma. Then yeah. again, when I say that word back at you, like I really am only just picking the like the first like. You, uh, somebody said it earlier. There are all different terms for this, like now, and they've always existed, but like they're just coming up now. Like where, how, where, where is your reaction coming from? Is it coming from where you know it can get to, or is it coming from a place of you feel like it's equal? Because then we're talking about how we balance the effect of being a certain race in America and its history versus another race and its history. And when we start looking at the histories of everybody, we end up with a very protected classes in those realms that have that ability. That is their privilege to say that word in their communities. And if it turns out that, you know, you white and you grew up in a, in a, in a neighborhood, you could choose to say it or not, but it won't fly across the board. This mm -hmm. one flies across the board. And the problem is, why are we letting it if we don't want any of the other things to fly across the board? And I'm saying it hasn't built up enough time or steam. So yeah, I, like, I, I've heard I this agree. argument and I've given this argument before, but the more that I think about it, I think this is just a super ad hoc academic argument that just, it, it, it's, it doesn't, it's not reflective of the reality of how people think. So, so here's a couple examples, okay? So like Asian people and Hispanic people in the US can say the N word and it's actually chill. Nobody like really generally like stops and cares that much about it but they don't have that same history of oppression. Um, Africans, like actual people that live in Africa, black Africans can come to the United States and they might not have any history of slavery, but they could say that word, which also doesn't make sense because they don't have that shared history. If they're like not an African American, they don't have that descendant of slaves. So I feel like this idea of like, well, there's a shared history, there's an oppression there. I feel like the way that it plays <coughs> out in terms of how people actually engage with the language, I don't think that that academic explanation like maps on well to people's understanding of how these words work or where they come from. I think it's just a way more, I don't want to say like shallowly constructed like cultural phenomenon of like, it's basically just like a word and like, as long as you're not white, you can use it and it's chill. And then like, if you are white, you can say any variation yeah. of it, it's like horrible. I think it's that simple. I don't, I don't think, I think well, all this struggle, it's not really stuck yeah, up and on that point. Yeah. Okay, there's, there's a perceived hierarchy. And if white people are at the top in most people's minds, they're the people who are kind of like fair game for the C slur or like slurs in general. We, I talked about this earlier. We went through a progression where like the N word uh, in like Xbox back in the day was common. It sort of faded away and became more and more rare. And uh, nah, like I didn't fade away. It just well, okay. <laughs> it on, on public, I public it so platform, it's on public platforms, it definitely faded away. I think in my personal experience, like I haven't heard it in so long. Like I'd be so shocked if I well, heard I mean, it. What? I'm, so yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a mixed environment. Here, Okay, wait, well, hold on. Yeah, we call each other the N-word back in games. It wasn't at only black people. People used to say that shit all the time in FPS. Yeah. <laughs> okay, had nothing to do yeah. if there was a black person in the room, right? Nah, because yeah. I'm going to use no, the no, T-Pain no, example mean. here. The T-Pain example, like, that was 2021, and that was directed at him. That might have been like, the T-Pain example 2021, but in 2013, if you hopped onto any CSGO server, or if you were in the early yeah. Xbox Live lobbies, yeah, there didn't, need to, be, there the didn't need to be any black person in that fucking call for people to just start calling everybody the N-word. That yeah. was just like... <laughs> It could, it could literally be all white, honestly. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, no, no, I get and, it. And, and, yeah, like, but my point is, like, it still happens now. Like, it's just that. Do you think it's getting better? 
I both you just in general better like so in, in general in general like racism do you feel like racism is like still moving in the right direction and like That's we're seeing less of this yeah but it's, I I mean, it's as, an important as a black question. american as a black american it it manifests itself in different ways do i think that socially it's much easier for me to navigate as a black person in america absolutely i don't have the threat of getting lynched in my backyard by a neighbor who is really upset that i looked at my daughter at the daughter weird like that reality is not in the in the modern zeitgeist of most most if not all black americans however there are still like systemic issues that we have to deal with i still have to deal with the fact that every time i turn on the news there's a black boy or girl getting blasted in, in the city where i live i still have to live with the reality that so many of so many like so many of my black students are failing out of schools so many of my black we'll students are having Scott children it. out of wedlock these are all still systemic uh, systemic issues that exist within like black communities that i'm involved in and other uh, other black communities in the united states like are you so racism isn't racism isn't something that isn't like exclusively interpersonally like interpersonally yes absolutely there's way less openly overtly racial sentiment but then there's still that coded stuff where you kind of have to, where like for black americans have to kind of navigate around like it's the reason why we won't have brain slug as an emo for instance that's it important that we're, noise. and you have to where it's coded and like it has to be coded i would say that's an improvement over like where we came from wait okay. is that uh, is an improvement that it has to be coded that is so, it's like it becomes so rare well yeah it's become so rare and i would say like that effect of like social media sites censoring it i think like it honestly shoves it out of people's mind to a huge extent and like reinforcing it by repeating that word or that word being common in your environment say in like rural areas of the united states if that's becoming less common in those areas that's a good thing like we just had the situation of god what was that adq of I mean, I don't know if I can say it here, but it's like, Nika stole my bike. Like, that was a whole problem, and they were just, like, spamming the brain slug emote. That's, like, something in the zeitgeist for a lot of black Americans on Twitch. And, like, we, and when we say things like being ha having it go underground would be an improvement if, again, and I feel like I said this earlier, if we were coding these things to be eliminated over time from people wanting to have that feeling that is justified by that word. And I feel like this word does not have that same need of coding because it got banned because people were upset over it. Whereas in, even though it's less easily overt, it's now so heavily coded that you have to navigate the spaces in which you exist with other people in a completely different mindset than anyone else at the party. This and is an important it, question. Um, so like, do you think authority structures, you think we talk about systemic racism, like it used to be way more overt. Like, um, do you think, do you feel like Twitch is on your side in terms of like, if you had a legitimate grievance based on being uh, someone being prejudiced towards you, I would ask you, like, do you feel like most social media sites, uh, authority figures would like take your side and like be receptive? Like, cause you have a power structure now that will seek to remedy your situation if you feel uh, prejudiced against. Also, I love you guys, but I have to sleep, okay? Stay safe, be careful. It's been fun chatting with all of you. Bye. Okay? I love you guys. Good, Good night. night.